put the water Unfortunately, we're not allowed to. But doesn't the water need to be kept warm? Yes. So this yes. is what we need. We yeah. need a brazier with a pot, I mean a bowl on top of it, uh -huh. and then another bowl that fits inside. Exactly. That would be great. And how and much size, does the water, and how much liquid do you need it to hold? Well, this needs to hold about a gallon. Which this one so you need a gallon bowl. In a bigger bowl of yeah, water yeah. for and a double bowl. And this could be, this is one that I, I found like Yeah. And you but see, it, it's not nearly as. You need deeper. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's shallower. You know, it's, it's more flared out, wider. Yeah. It doesn't but need it, to contain it, as much. It's working. This yeah, it's working. working. These bowls but you need a brazier underneath it. So we'll make it with a brazier. If you think we can. If you think we can. Yeah, I would be bad. So make a wide brazier. It doesn't have to be really deep. Just, uh -huh. and you don't even have to have sterno cans under it. You can actually take the charcoal briquettes that you get in, uh, really? in uh, the ceramic charcoal, the ceramic mm -hmm. briquettes, coat them with sterno and you shove them under there. <laughs> they look cool. You are so Are you kidding? So That's cool. how I do it with the pipkins. Wow. It looks like charcoal burning. This is yeah. already. But it's sterno. Yeah, our water, we're getting a good exchange. Water's already coming off. Yeah, yeah, see what we're doing is warming the milk with this system. Uh-huh. And that's, and we have to do it sort of double this way because you can't put this on straight on the fire because the milk would scorch underneath. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This, it's like it's kind of like a double boiler. And it's yeah. Pretty so you just you need a double yeah. boiler. Yeah. You need a you need a uh, brazier underneath. Well, yeah. we'll work on that. Yeah. Okay, if you think it's uh, uh, doable. I, I oh, love yeah. this. Doable. Good this morning, all, cheese yeah. ladies. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Good morning. Explain what you're doing here. Well, I am in the process of making. Um, soft cheese that I'm going to mold by hand. I'm just going to press the way out of it by hand. And uh, right now we're warming the milk because the milk, it's goat milk and the milk... Um, and this see, is from your goats? Yeah. You can see the butter fat has risen to the top. Mm -hmm. It's a little cold. I can tell you right now it's it's not even tepid. It's cold. And so um, we're, we're exchanging the water back and forth again to, to probably, make it warm. It's probably time. Yeah. And then what we're going to do is... Um, We'll add rennet to it and let it sit for a while and then we'll cut the threads of the maple cheese. Explain what, what rennet is. Rennet is um, an enzyme that occurs in a baby ruminant stomach, so a baby goat, a baby calf, baby whatever. And it, uh, it coagulates milk into cheese, essentially. And so way back when some caveman or woman discovered that that's what happened and they discovered that if you take a piece of the stomach, which we didn't do, modern does different, but if you take a piece of the stomach, you can do the same thing. So maybe if they put the goat's milk in the stomach, it mm -hmm. turned into cheese. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So you can go along that way. So <coughs> that's basically what we're doing right now. We've made ricotta from the whey. This is whey. And this is whey after the ricotta has been made, so it's very clear. It's usually milkier than that, but that's ricotta. So this and is the watery part of the, the milk, yeah. and that's the fat part of the milk, yeah. right? Yeah, and then we made from the all all of those products, those three products right there, all came from the same pot, pot of milk that was three gallons. That big cheese right there came from that. We just made that yesterday, and then you have to leave the whey to acidify overnight, and then we made the whey cheese. So then you press it to do get it in that, that form some way. Yeah, we pressed it. We pressed it, and these are aged cheeses in a ricotta that was made a while back, and, a, and butter. So it's just aged cheese. That's the butter made. is very white. It's goat milk. <laughs> so yeah, it's goat, it's goat butter. And it's whiter than cows. It's just the way it is. Good. Yeah, that's goat milk. And then uh, that, that hard cheese over there was made with a period recipe, but it, Liz and I made it um, at home. And, um, Would that be a kind of cheddar? or something? It's turning out to be sort of a cheddar Swiss Parmesan cross. It's, a, yeah, <laughs> it's it has, very good. It, it's flavor is reminiscent. May I taste it? <laughs> yes, it's you may. It's flavor is reminiscent of cheddar, but it's getting a very... If we aged this another month, it would be too hard to eat. You'd have to grate it like Parmesan. Yeah, it's gonna be oh. Cheese. Yeah. And it's just, I'm, I don't know, he doesn't explain how it was aged. The, the recipe doesn't talk about that mm. or what it was used for. My suspicion is if you needed a soft cheese, it was used right right after it was made. Mm -hmm. If you needed a, a semi-hard cheese, it was used a month or two after. If you needed a super hard cheese, you let it go. It, and, and, you know, you just had successions of these going on, so you just grabbed whichever you needed at that time for whatever you were going to do. I see. And so that's, that's basically what I, I think. So... I'm experimenting. I'm going to do more of that to figure out what 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 it happens at the different aging process. 
you know. I have a tasty thing you might like to try. Absolutely. This is some fresh ricotta that we just made this morning. And I was offered the use of some honey that somebody else had left over. So I took a bowl of fresh ricotta and drizzled some honey over it. Maybe in this bowl full, a couple of teaspoons max, it wasn't very much at all, and mixed it into the curds. And this makes a sweet, but not overly sweet, creamy, honey flavored, yummy dessert. Absolutely very, very delicious. Very simple. <laughs> it is. Well, thank you, ladies. Absolutely. Beautiful work. Nothing that we're doing today involves very high temperatures. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. now that you're you're almost up to temperature, then you're going to, did you say, add the rennet at that point? Yeah. That will make it congeal? Yeah. It's I tepid. Think, yeah. Would you like me to put in some more water? Um, no, I think this is warm good? enough right okay. now. So we're yeah, okay. I think the outer uh, ceramic bowl has heated up enough that it's, it's retaining. Yeah, it's retaining. Well. it's retaining. This is really, really a pretty good system considering that we've kind of like made it up on the fly. Yeah, <laughs> so about how long does it take to make your cheese from, from start to finish, say well, for the cheese that you're making now? This oh. this cheese, this cheese will take about, after I add the rennet, I'm going to add quite a bit of it, but it'll take about half an hour to 45 minutes to set up. And then we can cut it, and then we press out the whey, and it's done. Just like yeah. that. Other so you cheeses, could ostensibly have fresh cheese every day then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Other yeah. cheeses, like that one we made yesterday, we pressed it for about 12 hours, and now we've got the salt going because I want to make a rind on it. I want it to age a lot longer. Okay. Um, if you were making like a really soft cheese, like a chef cheese or something, um, you would only put a little tiny bit of rennet in it, and it would take about 12 hours to set up. And then you'd spoon it into like a, a straw basket, you know, a little basket or something, and let it drain. And then that that takes a couple of days. But it's it's a fairly quick process. It, and it's not anything that you need to sit at. I mean, I'm just stirring it because I'm bored. It's not really a quick process that you need to sit at constantly. You know, it's something that you come and attend to for half an hour and then you leave and go do other chores. And you come back three hours later and attend to it and then leave and go do chores work out perfectly if you're making your living on a farm. Yeah, exactly. The, the thing that takes the most time and that I think dairy maids did the most is heating the water, making sure that everything's clean because they scalded at all their vessels before they used them. So making sure everything's clean and then um, tending to the aging cheeses because they like to grow funny little like blue cheese micro fungi on top of it. And so you have to rub them. And you can imagine if you have 40 cheeses to turn over and rub every day, or a hundred, that is going yesterday. to be a lot of work. So I think that, and then of course separating the cream and making the butter, so basically you do have a full day's work, but it's very varied, and there's a lot of down salt, you know, a lot of down. Well that's very interesting, thank you for sharing your process. You bet.